Hello, all of you. I am Professor P. V. Suresh, Director, School of Computers and Information Sciences, Indira Gandhi National Open University, situated in New Delhi, at India. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the fourth international conference on virtual reality, and especially the conference chairs, Professor Dr. Gursun Akaslan and Professor Ramesh Sharma for giving this opportunity for presenting in the conference to me. My main topic will be virtual humans and their applications. So to start with, let us just think what is a virtual human. So a human who is virtual, that is a straightforward interpretation of the phrase virtual human. But then if you go for the meaning of it, a human who is not really human. So it looks like a human, it behaves like a human, but the reality is that it's not human. And that is what is virtual human. And the job is that how to create a virtual human, how to control a virtual human, and for what purpose virtual humans are to be destroyed, deployed, and do you need virtual humans? The main thing is, what is the application or what are the applications of virtual humans? Virtual reality had become buzzword now. Since the COVID crisis, many people have moved to virtual reality and other technologies to give a feeling that you are not in any crisis. It is almost truth that everything is as usual, an illusion that everybody tried to create during the time of crisis so that the tasks are not pending. They don't need to cancel any contracts. Okay, they are not at financial loss and the world should look as if it's moving on. We have many characters since many years many shows on the cartoon tv channels are very famous comics are very famous for children so these human like figures are existing since a long time you take a comic okay a comic book which a child normally completes reading in 10 to 15 minutes you see figures of humans in it they interacting with each other and the text is printed in a particular font and style adjacent to them so that you have a feeling that it is that particular human who is speaking so basically they are not real humans you can say they are also virtual humans the concept is existing since ages but now it has become very very popular due to its application particularly realized during the covid crisis there are many companies which are creating virtual humans rather than saying that just creating there are companies which designed virtual humans and are harnessing their potential to the maximum extent possible so again coming to the initial discussion who is a virtual human or what is a virtual human you can say that anything that looks like a human anything that behaves like a human can be treated like a virtual human provided it is not really human in our presentation we will be looking to some of the images that are virtual humans and we will also look to the applications of virtual humans and also some portals using whom you can also create virtual humans. So my topic title is virtual humans and their applications. 
So virtual humans can also be called digital humans. They are simulations of human beings on the computers. And the research domain is concerned with their representation, movement, and behavior. And virtual reality, virtual humans at present are very, very trending research areas. So there are many applications of uh, virtual humans in simulation, in games, in films and TV productions, in human factors and other ergonomic and usability studies in various industries, particularly aerospace, automobile, machinery, furniture and other things as well as clothing industry, telecommunications, medicine. Okay. And there are many more applications of virtual humans. Now, why you need a virtual human? Maybe at those places you need them where the real human cannot indulge. For example, you consider a drone. Drones are doing some things which a manned flight cannot do. So you have unmanned vehicles, then you have drones. Now, initially the drones were used for a particular purpose. Research has gone into it. Now drones are being used in many applications for agriculture and many, many things to deliver goods apart from being used in the warfare only. Now, let me say that you don't have time and you want to do a presentation to their students. So your students will be more enthusiastic, shall be paying more attention, provided you are teaching them. But for you, it is not possible to teach. You are completely tightly scheduled, but still there is a requirement to take the classes. So what you can do is that you can create a virtual human of yourself using some site, some tools, and you place it along with your presentation. Again, you have to use tool for everything. And then when you run the show or run the video, it will look as if you are teaching to them. So they have a feeling that, yes, it is our teacher who is teaching us. It's not that slides which are just running. So it just creates a feeling of a reality. For example, you have the chart bot. Initially, it is the humans who used to chart. Now, chart bots have come. And unless you notice in writing on the portal that you will be chatting with a chart bot, there are many chart bots which create a feeling that you are really chatting with a human. So, when somebody is chatting with you, sometimes it will be difficult for you to figure whether it is a human or whether it is a chatbot. And even chatbot also introduces itself with a name. So you don't get any doubt also. But however, in case you want to test, is it the real human who is chatting or is it a bot which is chatting with you? Then there are many ways to get it. Like you repeatedly ask the same question you repeatedly get the same answer. In the case of human, he may tell you the same thing twice or thrice and then he says how many times should I tell you. But a bot never says that. It is programmed to say exactly that whatever his question is every time you ask the same question. Then we can also program it in such a way that if you are asked the same question more than two times, you give a different answer. But then again, that is also uniform. Anything you ask two times, it will repeat the same thing. So it is easy to find out whether you are chatting with a bot or a human, provided you are interested to know it. But in the case of virtual human, you will find that the virtual human is resembling you if it is your virtual human, but definitely not you. It is easy to real, uh, catch it up. But then you also have a feeling 
that somebody is teaching you and you may also have a feeling that it is your teacher who is teaching you there is a gap between not having a human and between having a human that gap gets reduced with virtual humans apart from that some more applications are that like flight simulation or designing a car wherein you cannot have different humans of different personalities sitting and checking other measurements how much a the collapse of the steering should collapse how much a pushback seat should have its length all these things because there are n number of humans you can't test everything with each and every human for that also virtual humans are designed the things are tested and products are developed which are successful when compared to their production with trying to test them with a fixed number of human beings so there are many areas where virtual humans are having applications and these applications are increasing day to day so here you can say human in the loop simulation of outer space so it's basically it is not a real human okay it is a virtual human now there are two types one virtual human resembles you that is one option another virtual human doesn't resemble you that is called avatar so you create an avatar it is not essentially resembling you it can be anything okay but it will be labeled with your name so you will say that okay it's my avatar and people map that avatar with you then in the case of virtual human what happens is that it resembles you okay there is a film actor okay that avatar resembles the film actor but not exactly the same so there is a, a difference between the avatar and the virtual human you can say these are the two different categories but again overall the domain is again coming under virtual human but under virtual humans you can say avatars is one okay and again avatar doesn't need to resemble exactly a human but when an avatar resembles a human you can say it is a virtual human in the case of teaching you have you cannot use an avatar you can use an avatar but if it if it resembles you the impact will be high then there are other applications like uh, for example medical applications a medical application might require an exact simulation of specific internal organs then film industry requires highest aesthetic standards natural movements facial expressions so the virtual humans once they are created research is also going on that how to make them naturally move how to make them understand the commands how to make them interact with audio so you can again think of artificial intelligence they are trying their best to make ai applications think like humans now there are instances where they are thinking more than a human but not exactly human they are either less than human or more than a human but not exactly human but unless you make it exactly human you cannot say that there is no gap between artificial intelligence and the natural intelligence the same is the case here also you create a virtual human then you are trying to power it with all the features of a human being and make it as much look real as possible because more features you are able to import to virtual humans more applications are fit so this is one site wherein you can create a virtual human 
so that is uh, synthesia.io i will run that one uh, after my presentation is over or in the last 5 minutes of my presentation so in what areas research is going on as a virtual humans is concerned it is a very vast field anatomy and geometry that is one area where it's uh, going on then you have see you can see the buckle here okay so a 3d model is being created for it okay so making a 3d model of a viking belt buckle using a handheld viu scan 3d laser scanner so uh, any images whatever they are used i would like to acknowledge that they are the sole properties of the owner who created them and at the end of the presentation i have given some urls also uh, from where the content for the presentation has been taken so i duly acknowledge uh, all the owners of uh, anything that is part of the presentation to the respective owners then skeletal animation so it's an animation of joint angles of the skeleton structure defining the articulator body and consisting of segments like representing the limbs and joints with the representation of degrees of freedom so here you can see it is a virtual human and you can see the fingers okay their movements okay the degree of freedom everything is visible so the main methods of skeletal animation are parametric key frame animation direct and inverse kinematics direct and inverse dynamics or other physically based animation techniques a very common way of obtaining the joint angles is through motion capture so here you can see how the motion can be captured okay you can see the person who is designing it there are also several methods to model the motion from the data obtained by motion capture the data that is obtained is motion graphs models based on principal component analysis machine learning and other things so here you can see uh, like uh, i have already told you there are two main classes one is avatar and okay this is one avatar okay it is in the virtual world second life so another is autonomous virtual humans an autonomous virtual human is an autonomous agent with embodiment or an embodiment agent so a particular case of virtual human is the virtual actor representing an existing personality and acting in a film or a series i give an example of a teacher you will have a actor you can have a teacher you can have a political leader virtual human can be represented for any human okay now let us see the history all these things have started in 1960s but have become popular now ergonomic analysis provided some of the earliest applications in computer graphics for modeling a human figure and its motion so william fetter a boeing art director in early 20th century was the first person to draw a human figure using a computer so he is william fetter he is a person who created the first virtual human okay this is the virtual human he created okay he belongs to boeing uh, william fetter and this is the first virtual human he created and it's in 1964 so this figure is known as the boeing man the seven jointed first man used for studying the instrument panel of a boeing 747 enabled many pilot motions to be displayed by articulating the figure's pelvis neck shoulders and elbows the addition of 12 extra joints to first man produced second man this figure was used to generate a set of animation film sequences based on a series of photographs produced by edward muybridge so then we have other models developed one is cyberman it was developed by chrysler corporation for modeling human activity in and around a car it is based on 15 joints and the you can uh, i'll just show you it yeah this is the cyberman 
okay chrysal they it is a chrysal corporation which developed chrysler corporation okay. this is cyberman so there is one more model that was developed that is combi man it's a computerized biomechanical man model it was specifically designed to test how easily a human can reach objects in a cockpit it is defined using a 35 internal link skeletal system so this is combi man they are having very wide applications i have given uh, the references uh, uh, related to these models if you can read each model you will be able to get an idea of a new model and you can also develop a similar model and try to deploy it in the relevant industry so other one is boyman it was designed in 1969 by boeing corporation it is based on a 50th percentile three dimensional human model he can reach for objects like baskets collisions are detected and visual interference and interferences are identified so this is a uh, one model that was created then another virtual human is buford it was developed at rockwell international to find reach and clearance areas around a model positioned by the operator it also represented a 50th percentile human model and was covered by cad generated polygons buford is composed of 15 independent links that must be redefined at each modification then parke produced a representation of the head and face at the university of utah and 3 years later he proposed parametric models to produce a more realistic face so this is the model which he created a virtual human for facial modeling then coming to the production of films and demos in the beginning of the 80s several companies and research groups produced short films and demos involving virtual humans so in particular information international incorporates commonly called triple 1 or 3 produced or showed the potential for computer graphics to do amazing things by producing a 3d scan of peter fonda's head and the ultimate demo adam powers the juggler so there are some recently created virtual humans so one is boyds okay so the behavioral animation was introduced and it was developed by craig reynolds he had simulated flocks of goats alongside schools of fish for the purpose of studying group intuition and movement by integrating numerous virtual humans to inhabit virtual worlds muse and talman then initiated the field of crowd simulation so he can, here you can see the boys it is one model that was created so these are the three dimensional computer graphics these are different models that are created and starting in the 90s researchers have shifted to real time animation and to the interaction with the virtual worlds so the merge of virtual reality human animation and video analysis techniques has led to the integration of virtual humans in virtual reality the interaction with these virtual humans and the self representation as a clone or avatar or participant in the virtual world so this is the virtual reality all of you are very well aware of the gear and other things but virtual humans is something which is having a wider application because you create a virtual human and you deploy it for some things which you think can be fit to be deployed in case you are in some industry try to design a virtual human you can uh, use the references their research papers you can study one of them and try to design and deploy it so interaction with virtual environments was planned to be at various levels of user configuration so a high end configuration could involve an immersive environment where users would interact by voice gesture and physiological signals with virtual humans that would help them explore their digital data environment both locally and over the web so for this virtual human started to be able to recognize gestures speech and expressions of the user and answer by speech and animation 
the ultimate objective of this development is to create realistic and believable virtual humans with adaptation, perception, and memory. So these virtual humans paved the way of today research to produce virtual humans that can act freely while simulating emotions. Ideally, the goal is to have them aware of the environment and unpredictable. So there are many applications which we have already seen, virtual patients, uh, virtual presenters. Okay, maybe in future it will be very difficult for you to uh, really locate who is virtual and who is real. Okay, because the developments are happening at such a rapid pace that you should not distinguish a virtual human from a real human. So these are some uh, acknowledgements and also I recommend uh, referring them. So now uh, what I will do is uh, I will uh, share uh, a few portals wherein you can create your own virtual humans. See, here the person who is speaking, is it a real human or a virtual human? Maybe you can use the word avatar. Okay. Because you haven't seen the real human who resembles her. So you can say that this is an avatar. Or if there is a human who can resemble her, then you can say it's a virtual human. So using this particular portal, you can create virtual humans. Okay, you can create your own virtual human. So another is uh, so this is another portal for virtual humans. I found that one also interesting. Okay, like you see this one. Hello there. My name is Jackie Lee, and I'm very passionate about my work as a medical doctor. My partner and my staff think I work too hard, but I love what I do. I also like to help language learners speak fluent English. I know it helps their mental health when they can speak with their friends and workmates. I also know it keeps them safer at work when they understand what people are instructing them to do. If I can help you improve your English skills, please call into Linklingo. I would love to chat with you. So here you can see the top 15 virtual influencers for this year 2022. So like if you go to Janti, this is one of the virtual influencer. So for this year they listed top 15 virtual influencers. You can have a look by going to this particular portal influencer marketing hub.com okay. so these are the virtual influencers top virtual influencers of 202 so this is another site wherein you can find the virtual humans you can explore and create one and deploy it also and find some application. So I'm not sure whether you are able to see the sites or not. I think one you are able to see. 
let me just show you something. Okay, this is one. <coughs> okay, this is one portal wherein you can have a look at virtual influencers for what purpose they are used, all these things. Okay. Then This is one more top 15 virtual influencers you can see. So there are many other portals also. So I, I hope you got some information about uh, virtual humans due to this uh, presentation. These are not very new things which are shared. And then I also would like to say that there is a huge potential for virtual humans. And let us start from wherever we are. Let us create a virtual human as an exercise. Let us deploy. It. May not be a very uh, big application, but start with a smaller application. And in fact, what I suggest to you is that in this particular area, go through some journals. Okay, find the latest journal edition on this particular subject. Read article and find the limitations of it. Normally, the limitations are given at the end of every publication. Try to overcome those limitations. So first of all, you have to implement that paper. And then you have to overcome the limitations by working on it, which will become a valuable output of your work. So try to do it. I will also try to do. And I'll try to be in touch with all of you. And I would like to thank the conference organizers once again for giving this opportunity. I have already displayed my email address on my first slide. You can always be in touch with me also. You can communicate on that mail ID. Thank you very much. Thank you.